Hello, my name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software. Today, let's talk about Redgate Software. More specifically, let's talk about my favorite Redgate tool, SQL Prompt. I can't live without it. It's just incredible. Now, most people use SQL Prompt and they know about the type ahead. That's great. They know about the formatting. Oh boy, does everyone know about the formatting? And then things get weird because there's actually a ton of functionality in there that's just not getting used. And heck, some of it I didn't know was in there, but other bits um, are very well established. It's just people aren't using them. So let's go through SQL prompts. Let's not look at you know the formatting and the code completion. Let's look at what else it does. Now, a lot of the commands inside of SQL prompt are not actually that obscure, but it's just that people don't use them that frequently. So, they're, so they're, they forget they're there, or they, they don't know about them. There are a few that are legitimately kind of hard to find. So we're going to walk through some of it. Now, one thing you want you to see right up front is that it's got these hints telling me that uh, a.city can't be found, s.name can't be found, um, sales.store, invalid objects. So I've got a bunch of invalid objects in here that it just doesn't understand what's going on. So what's the problem? Well, I'm in the wrong database. So let's switch over to the right database. And then it's going to refresh and it's going to start finding the objects there. So we can start to see that in fact, we don't have all the syntax errors that it said we had. Now it still thinks we've got another one um, because I don't have a batch separator in here, letting it know that this command is separate from the other commands and now I put them in and off it goes. And so it's a lot happier now than it was. So I'm going to undo that for the moment just because it's going to mess with stuff that we're doing. So let's go in here and take a look at the menu suggestion because this is where things get fun. Now we've got the whole code analysis. I'm going to show you a couple of things there. Formatting, everyone's used to formatting. What you might not be used to is the fact that you can pick a particular style that you want to work with while you're working. I'm using the SQL in the city style that I've created, um, but we've also got other fun stuff that we can do. Apply casing options. What? What the heck is that? Well, let's go down here and take a look at this bit of code. So we've got this code down here. And there's a whole bunch of problems with it, but what if we said, hey, you know what? What I want to do is I want to apply the casing option. So it's going to look at that. It's going to go, hey, look at that. You didn't have the casing that you chose in your options. And so I can get that. I'm going to turn that off for the moment. We can um, qualify object names. Now that's a huge one. Like for example, this object name Invalid object name sales.header, uh, order header. Why? Because it needs to be qualified. So let's go in here and qualify the object name. Hey, look, and now it's a valid object. So if we want to fix this one too, um, all we have to do is go back into SQL prompt and you could use the command qualify object name or whatever. And so now it's cleaned it all up. And so now I've got this thing in, in place and it's working. So I've finally got, you know, uh, cleaned up thing. Also notice that it took off the um, where I've got bad kind of bad um, choices down here where I did three part names. It, it took off part of the name because it doesn't need it now that it's qualified the object owner from there. What else can we do from here? We can talk about inserting semicolons. Now I don't have semicolons here so let's go ahead and highlight this and tell it yes in fact make sure that it has semicolons. All right so let's go and find hey, let's find unused variables and parameters. And it goes up and looks, and sure enough, right here, I've got a variable declared but never used. So I can either figure out, you know, did I typo that someplace? Is there an issue? But hey, look, it's letting me know I can clean up my code. It's not simply, you know, telling me what's good or bad, but it's helping me clean my code up. And that is, uh, by the way, one of our prompts from Remember I mentioned earlier how we would uh, have code analysis. So the code analysis can find that and a whole bunch more. The code analysis is actually not that you know obscure. It's fairly used quite a lot by a lot of people. What about finding invalid objects? Now we cleaned up a lot of stuff before, but now let's see if we can find any invalid objects at all. Are there things that are created in the database that are no longer valid? And short answer in this case 
is going to be no. Let's wait for it. But what if we what if we did have invalid objects? Let's let's go create some. Now I've got a really simple script here. It's going to create a table, my table. Put a couple of columns into it. Then I'm going to create a view that selects from that table, and then I'm going to drop the table. Now that's going to make the view invalid. Now this is a perfectly valid command. I mean, we can do this. And if we were to do select star from my view, oops. It's going to come up as an invalid object. I mean, so that's a broken object inside of SQL Server. But we can track these down for you. Let's take a look at finding invalid objects. And hey, look, it figured out that that view is incorrect. That view is broken. And it even tells you what things there are. And you can script selected objects as drop or alter. So you can clean these things up using SQL prompt. That's fantastic stuff. I mean, it makes a big difference in what you're doing in your code. Now, let's get even weirder. What if we wanted to say, you know, let's reformat this code, right? I really want to reformat this code. Or actually, that's not what I want. What I really want is I want to make sure that I don't let this code get formatted. So I'm going to disable formatting for the selected code. And yeah, if you put in SQL prompt formatting off and SQL prompt formatting on, and then we try to run this, well, let's not run it with the bad syntax. That would be a problem. It does not format code that's inside of these wrappers. That's amazing. Also, did you notice what else is going on over here? Once you've highlighted code, you get this little menu and you can hit Control to see a list of the options, or you can drop down. You can actually say, hey, you know what? Do a begin and end block. And you can do it like that. And it puts the begin and end block around the code that we had highlighted. <gasps> That's cool stuff. There's even more. Once Again, once you've highlighted code, you can start to see behaviors. Create inline table valued function with CTE. Create view. Try catch. Add commas. Add quotes and commas. Apply casing options. Comment. And it comments the code. Control Z will undo it immediately. Encapsulate as a stored procedure. Expand the wildcards. Format the SQL. Now, if you've got it highlighted like this, it's probably going to format this SQL because you're highlighting it from within the things that let you know not to do that. Let's go ahead and, oops, Control Z, make that go away. What else does this thing do? Uh, insert semicolons, that's good. Qualify the object names, that's great. Remove comments, remove square brackets, and uncomment, and even unformat. So you can undo formatting all from within SQL Prompt. And these are all things that are built in there that people are not using that frequently. And so I just wanted to expose them to you. Another thing that you should do is go into your SQL Prompt options and think about how you use it. One thing that I always do is I go straight to my insertion keys for the suggestions and change it so that the space bar is included because I like to type the space bar and have it do everything for me from there. Um, other things that you can look at are changes to, let's see, um, not the object statements. That's not the one that excites me. Qualifications, ensuring that the qualification names are always there Qualify the column names with aliases. These are all things that you can control directly, and it just makes a big difference. Aliases is something I always like to include, and I always like to use the as, and you can control these things through the options. So make sure you get into the options and explore what's there, as well as noting the, the options that are here in the menu choices, 
you also have some options in if you right click, oops, hang on, let's get it right. If you right click, there are options so you can control things from there. And then finally, there is our little control command over here with all the various things that it has. So there's a whole bunch of stuff inside of SQL Prompt that people just don't use nearly enough. So now I've pointed out a bunch of you, a, a bunch of them to you. Get out there and use them. Pretty useful stuff, right? There's more there, there's more there. Don't run away. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. I need viewers so I can tell my boss this stuff is useful to you guys. Now, SQL Prompt is going to grow and it's going to change. There's going to be more stuff coming. Don't you worry. Uh, I've been talking to the teams. Um, there's all kinds of things, exciting news in various aspects of it. Um, can't share any of it yet because it's just not ready, but we've got a lot more fun stuff coming with it. So keep an eye on the space so you know when it comes out, so you know some of the new functionality that's going to expand what we can get done with the tool. That's it. My name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software.